I'm going to tell you a story. Some of you will believe this to be history, and some will believe this to be a fairy tale. How many of you would agree that we currently live in a world filled with immorality? I mean, just overflowing with it. Look at our sexuality, the porn industry, entertainment, the drug industry, the food industry, the technology, the weapons. There are many reasons why some people don't believe in a God. But you see, the main reason is they think they don't need to. Did you know that before man could predict the weather, he prayed for it? He didn't know how it worked. He just knew, for example, that if it rained when he needed it to, it was a blessing. But now that man has the knowledge, now that man has a better understanding of how the weather works, he doesn't need God, right? It's all natural. Is it? Is it really? Now, there are many ancient writings and artifacts that have made it into our library of knowledge about the world we live in, and the Bible is one of them. Whether you believe it to be true or not, it is part of our world history and it is very significant. And along with that, there is a book that may help to fill in the blanks about who we once were and who we are today, if you bother to look. And that, my friends, is, in the words of Rod Serling, submitted for your perusal, the Book of Enoch. foot and a half. 
You can do the math. That is taller than the tallest building in Dubai. See, these angels that descended to Earth wanted to control man. They wanted their own kingdoms, which they had and still have today. They wanted to have their own lineage. Understand that their sons, the Nephilim, these things have to eat. And man and all his hard work and efforts could not sustain them. So the giants turned on man in order to devour them. They turned on the animals and did only God knows what to them. They eventually turned against each other. They cannibalized each other. Also during this time, one of the angels that descended, Azazel, began to teach man how to kill. He taught them metalworking, how to make weapons such as swords and daggers. He taught them how to make shields and protective armor. He then taught man how to make jewelry and other ornaments. Folks, do you know what certain metals do to the human body when you wear them? Such as copper and gold? Why, it increases the electrical conductivity of the body, making you a better receiver. This unappointed watcher taught them the art of beautification and how to apply makeup. And this was the beginning of the total corruption of man. Some of the other angels taught men how to cast spells. They taught them astrology and the path of the moon. Think about it. Who do you think taught men how to communicate with spirits using rituals? You think men just came up with these rituals on their own expecting them to work? So at this point, we have a world that is filled with corruption and bloodshed. So much so that some of the angels that remained in heaven knew that God was aware of this, and so they asked him what they should do about it. So God sent an angel to save the son of Lamech and to reveal to Noah the coming of the end. He then instructed Raphael to bind the hands and feet of Azazel and throw him into darkness, covering him with jagged stones in the desert of Dudal, which is believed to be east of Jerusalem, but no one is certain, especially since the world after the flood would be much different. God then sent Michael to inform Semyaza and the others that they would have to stand by and watch their children kill each other off. And once they witnessed the destruction of the Nephilim, these angels were to be imprisoned for 70 generations in the hills of the earth. Then came the great flood. So fast forward to today. The question is, if these accounts of Enoch were true, is there any evidence that exists to support it? You see, a fossil, well, most fossils, are formed when a plant or animal are suddenly buried beneath water, mud, and silt. This is why you don't see fossils that are recent. Are you with me so far? If you've been paying attention, you know that the number of giant skeletons that have been found as of today is in the thousands. Are they all a hoax? These discoveries have been going on since the early 1900s, and they are not found in just one place. No, they are everywhere. First off, folks, let me tell you something. When I say something is millions of years old, I am only reporting data from the scientists who determine these dates. It does not mean that I agree. I know better. You see, there are various methods to determining the age of a fossil. Unfortunately, the older something is, the less accurate the dating. And these dating methods are based on assumption. They assume Uranium-238 has a half-life of about 4.5 billion years, based on a standard that was created back in 1971. Assuming that the Uranium-238 to Uranium-235 ratio has been constant since the forming of the Earth. The truth is, it varies from rock to rock. How about explaining to me why they find carbon-14 in coal, diamond, and dinosaur bones when carbon-14 has a half-life of 5,730 years? By the way, they don't just find giant skeletons. They find giant weapons, spearheads, axes, swords, footwear, giant steps. Look at all the megalithic structures around the world, folks. Someone had to lift these things. Look at the giant stone balls they found in Costa Rica, Bosnia, New Zealand, 
North Dakota. I am inclined to believe that these were actually used as weapons, hurled through the air by giants using a very large catapult, or even a handheld slingshot or handheld catapult like the ones you see in this art piece. Some geologists actually want you to believe that some of these spheres are concretions formed naturally over millions of years. Come on, man. You know, I try to give geologists and other scientists a chance, but they always come up with this garbage. Now, if the Nephilim died off in the flood, it does not mean that their spirits, which were half angel, just vanished. What if the spirits of the Nephilim were released into the world to become what we know as evil spirits or demons? We see the rise of giants after the flood. What lineage were they from? Of what lineage were the six-fingered, six-toed, red-haired giants of North America, the Kandahar giant of Afghanistan? Of what lineage are all the polydactyl celebrities and athletes? And I'm talking about people who are quite famous today. The Book of Enoch tells us that the fallen angels were imprisoned in the hills of the earth. Could it be that these imprisoned watchers have something to do with the increase of earthquakes, volcanism, and the sinkholes around the world? Only time will reveal the truth, and I believe that time is upon us. And even if you don't believe in the Bible or Book of Enoch, in this day and age of corruption, it may be a good idea to read through some of these texts, just for the sake of morality. I don't know how I could have said it better than that, so I feel that it's better be said for me. I love you all. Never forget, we are the true existence. We will not stop. We will not be stopped.